On this episode of the podcast, I have with me Noah Bedome. He is the CISO at Open Door. He actually joined Open Door pretty recently. He's going to talk to us about his his initial experience of aligning his security roadmap to the business goals that he was hired for. He's actually a little bit of an expert in doing this. Super excited for him to share his time with us. Noah, thanks for being on the podcast. Thank you very much. I think expert is a dangerous word. I, 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 I've seen your background. I think I'm going to call you expert from uh, the uh, stand over here because I think it's a, you've, got, you've worked at Datadoc, phenomenal background. We'll let you kind of describe your own self. And yeah, so actually maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us what Open Door does. I want to make sure everyone understands the context of uh, you know what the company does and curious to kind of get your insights on the topic. And as long as you say expert and I don't, that's okay. Fair point. So Open Door, Open Door is pretty interesting. Essentially, Open Door is a technology-enabled platform that simplifies and streamlines the whole buying and selling and trading in homes kind of market right now, right? So like your whole experience from the beginning, from like if you're selling a home, you're buying a home, all those things are made much easier. If you've ever gone through the experience, whether you're buying or selling, it's it can be pretty painful and it's a pretty old process right now. And this is using a technology platform to make that really easy and convenient for anybody who wants to do it. It's definitely an exciting uh, space to be in. And I know you're there pretty, you know, a couple of months in, I guess, start of the year, transition from uh, a different role. I know you've worked in the consulting space as well. And the topic, which I think is there's some good synergies with having been brought in uh, recently, you can kind of talk about some of this uh, fresh top of mind is, you know, aligning the security roadmap to what the business wants to achieve. And I think, you know, really what would be interesting in the podcast is talking about how you potentially go about the process and, you know, from being hired and, and obviously having a vision for that. And how do you actually go about getting that into play? And I guess maybe, you know, top of the uh, heap here is maybe when you were about to be hired, obviously you're formulating thoughts of what you're going to do when you're brought in, you have your own agenda. You know, what kind of process do you go through before actually, you know, starting on, you know, in January at Open Door? Uh, it was kind of interesting because I was planning on taking six months off work initially. Okay. I had a really good run at Datadog. It was one of the, I think, best experiences of my life. And I had, you know, a great team there. And I stepped out and I really was uh, no idea what I was going to do. But I know I wanted to hang out with my three girls and my wife and and do that kind of thing. Well, you know, I met Ian, started chatting with Ian. That was a great. And I really rapidly became very interested in the mission, but also the specific challenges, right? Realty is a just everything around realty at all is really highly regulated. There's a lot of things it touches. It touches banking and touches, you know, individual privacy, a bunch of stuff. So there's like a very interesting problem set there. And, Mm -hmm. you know, once I decided I was going to join and everything was good, I started thinking about that. And I had this moment sitting on my porch where I was like kind of mentally cataloging all of the things that like need to be the major concerns, the things that like, keep me up at night, things that might be major difficulties. And the, the first step is always like, what's the team like? But that's a total unknown you can't control. And then the other one is like, how bought in is everybody else other than the really excited stakeholders I interacted with? How bought in are they going to be? But once you get past those two things, which you have no control over, right, <laughs> is the technology pieces, right? And so in my head, the things I, you know, start going through are like, okay, I have to be concerned about privacy, what privacy laws, what regulations, what different legislations, what compliance standards are we going to be subject to? So then that goes down this big rabbit hole, me reading about, you know, RESPA and a variety. RESPA is like part of the regulatory statutes that cover things like realty, right? Like realty law. So going through all those things, obviously privacy is a big deal. And then just kind of cataloging like every standard, every kind of like, from what I know about the tech stack, the major concerns of my questions and just writing out this huge, long laundry list of questions. Because no matter how much you prep for it, you can't be prepared for what you're going to see because you have no idea. Going back to consulting, anytime you make an assumption of what the environment's going to look like before you actually map it, you always set yourself up for failure. So my big one there is just like, I literally had a, had four or five written pages of question marks, right? Like, what is this like? What is this like? What is this like? What technology are we using? What standards? What were historical problems? Have we had any security incidents? Dang, all that kind of stuff. How much of your approach is predicated on having been a consultant and kind of coming in with those questions in mind and wanting to get the deeper answers to understand the lay of the land? 
I would say like most of it. I think the part that's tempered by my non-consulting background is knowing that like it's never with when you're consulting, you know, you're there for a couple of weeks, months, whatever, and then you're gone. It's always much deeper than what you see as a consultant, whatever it is. But the general ability to quickly ramp up to come into an environment, get familiar with the environment, identify what's important, and really start to understand the environment. I think that's like that's like the bread and butter of a, especially doing pen testing, red teaming, security engineering consulting. That's like your bread and butter. So I, uh, <laughs> it's funny because a friend of mine, Kev Dunn, who's still at NCC Group, he and I talked at long lengths uh, many a time about how difficult this specific process is, right? Coming in with no assumptions, figuring out an environment, especially a company that you don't, you know, you're not really a part of, and then kind of integrating yourself in and really figuring out how to make a difference. There's a lot that goes into that. And I think the fact that that's been a continuous thought exercise for me sets me up for success. And there's a lot that goes into it. Absolutely. I guess so. You know, you're coming in, you've got your four or five pages of questions, you're starting. At one point, do the questions and you're uh, interviewing team members, getting an understanding of what's there and capabilities. At what point do you start mapping that to this is what the business needs? And this is the time frame that I think I can actually execute. Is that a, for you a days, weeks, months? Yeah. So when I came on, I basically told myself that unless it was a critical problem that I was observing something, you know, that was actively dangerous or something. And, you know, there really wasn't anything like that. So, yay. (laughs) But unless I saw something like that, I wasn't going to make any changes for the first four to six weeks. I was going to do my best to keep things as close to what they currently were and just try to understand it and like live part of it. I mean, that didn't exactly like there were little things change, right? Cadence of some of the meetings. There was definitely like I had some opinions about SOX compliance stuff, those kind of things. Right. So those all those like just having opinions, but I I really try to keep it like the four to six week mark, I think is right, especially for a organization that's many years old that has, you know, upwards of a thousand employees. It's a pretty short amount of time, even if you think as a new hire, right? If you're a new hire in any company short amount of time to feel like you have an understanding of the business. And I actually like, couldn't just think I did. I had to actually have an understanding business. Open doors, the business is very complex, right? So an organization like this touches many different things. Like I said, like from banking to privacy and a variety of other transactional things. And there's a lot of stuff that go into it, right? The current realty market, all these things, right? And I have to actually understand how they touch our systems and also how they impact our business. So there was like a lot of interviewing. <laughs> there was quite a lot of more questions generated that four or five pages, I think grew to about nine pages before I started actually weeding it down. And the real big thing for me is once I needed to know for sure that I understood what actually was important to the business and not just what one or two groups of people, right? I had to get to the point where I had correlated all the data. Then I felt kind of ready to start like suggesting action, right? Start making action, making change. When you start looking at sitting down and trying to align the vision, right? Obviously, when you're first hired, you know, what do you think you can do? Obviously, all that stuff's happening. And now, you know, you have more depth. And do you, in that context, look to realign with the management team on understanding of potentially with better groundings and understandings of what you're looking to accomplish, the timelines change or... Or is it maybe breaking up to quick wins, long-term wins in terms of you know setting the right expectation? Well, I think every business is going to have different needs when you come on, right? If you came into an organization, let's say you had joined a very large company that just had a major breach, right? If you you joined somewhere like that and you were one of like a CISO came on after you know a major problem, then I think there's some specific expectations of you. Here, that wasn't the case, right? So come on, and the first question was really just always what don't we know, right? And so that was my fact finding and that kind of stuff. So from there, I had to figure out what the best approach was. Is it, hey, we need to fix these immediate bleeds right now? Is it, hey, what we really need is long-term, is work toward this long-term goal? For me, I think generally it tends to be a middle of the road. So the way I approach it is the first thing I always do in any assessment of any kind is I clearly identify and get consensus from my stakeholders what we're actually measuring. So 
in terms of this, it's what is security responsible for, right? What is security's job at Open Door? Is security's job to make sure the application is perfect and don't worry about anything else? Is security's job more focused on physical security of locations? Is security's job more just advising on risk? Like what are kind of the different major buckets, you know, preventing harm, responding to risk, enabling the business and informing decisions? Like if you broke it down into those areas, what are the kind of the tactical major initiatives that on a regular basis security is doing in each of those areas? And getting everyone to agree that that's what we're responsible for, that's what we do, what our scope is. And then once we know what we're actually supposed to be measuring, then figuring out where we're at, right? And so I think one of the major parts was in those first four to six weeks, actually identifying what I should even care about. And then getting you know buy-in from all of our executive stakeholders. What is the thing I should actually be measuring security on? Once we got that figured out, it, was, it goes pretty quickly, right? Because now you're like, okay, how good are we at this thing? How good are we at this thing? What do we need? What are we missing, right? And you can usually map those things to like external frameworks, you know, prior art, that kind of stuff. And that stuff falls into place pretty quickly. It's that first bit of driving consensus on what are we actually measuring? That's, I think, the most important step. How often do you go back to revisiting the roadmap and trying to evaluate if what you're measuring is still the most important thing to be examined? I think roadmaps should be living. They are- you should annotate when you have to pivot and change. So I think that could happen all the time. I think it could be at any point where you kind of hit an inflection point. For this case, I like regular reporting around the quarterly mark. So I think quarter is a good time to look back. And then I think there's a good time to do retrospectives at the six-month mark, right? And look back and say, hey, over the last six months and even the last 12 months, did I learn anything that I missed in my last retrospective, right? I guess just I, maybe more of a tactical question, but when you're looking at, you know, the retrospective and trying to, you know, reset expectations, you know, if, if something does need to be reexamined, how do you talk to the team? Because obviously you've kind of, you know, maybe picked a particular direction. You need to move the team to maybe you know, an alternate path, an alternate view of what needs to be done and, and you need buy-in and you want to make sure everyone is on board. Yeah. So I think this is super, <laughs> this is like incredibly important. I'm a big believer that community is the most important thing in the entire world, right? The people around you, you don't do anything alone. Even just going to the grocery store, you know, you interact with a ton of people. So I think this is one of the most important parts. And so I think it starts with the foundation in the very beginning. So in my first week at Open Door, I met with every single person who reports through anybody who reports to me. And plus additional stakeholders who are like deeply involved with inside the team. So everybody who... I could be, you know, my choices on where we're going to spend time is an impact. I want to make sure I talk to them, have a 30-minute one-on-one and like get to know them, understand so that there's an open door, (laughs) open door. And then from there, I started, this is something I've been doing for now multiple places, is I started doing these things I call roundtables. So essentially every two weeks, I meet with everyone who is a senior engineer or below all together as a group. And we usually have talking prompts or maybe I'm asking for feedback for specific things, or maybe I'm talking to them about an idea I have. I do that same at the staff engineer level and the team lead level, right? Then obviously with my direct report managers. And so I think having those meets every two weeks means that as I'm having thoughts, as we're dealing with difficulties with, let's say, things like OPRs or technical challenges or the organization is shifting focus, it's not like we went nine months before talking to, or six months or even a quarter before talking to my ICs who are doing the work every day. I'm literally talking to them every two weeks. So I have this really open discussion pattern of what things are like and, you know, what their opinions are and maybe what direction we should go. And all of my road mapping is always, I come up with the general ideas, then I kick them to the team, I get feedback, team adds more stuff, and then we iterate together until we come to something that is essentially amalgamation of my initial vision, their, you know, check against my thought processes, plus their additives from things I may have missed. And then it becomes this thing that everyone kind of bought into because everyone feels like they have a voice. That's a great process. And I was going to ask you about the culture side. And obviously, when you first get there, understanding of security and the culture and the view. And I know you mentioned one of the things you want to do is define security's job and role. You know, obviously, I'm sure you're talking in uh, part of the interview process, you know, understanding all that stuff. But how much of that do you have to 
come in with a blank slate to fully absorb everything versus, you know, from your consulting background, you have all these different tools in your toolbox that, you know, you don't want to make any assumptions over. Yeah. I think blank slate is pretty important. Yeah. So the analogy I always use is that I, there was a time in my career where I did a pen test and that I felt like I was doing pretty good at my career at the time. I was having a lot of success in some really hard pen testing, red teaming kind of stuff. And I had, um, I think I just filed my a CVE and I was like kind of writing that, that high on like, ah, I'm so good at security. And then, you know, I walked into a uh, test against the Windows environment and I was like, oh, this is just going to be the same thing. I'm going to replay these specific vulnerabilities. They use tech stack. I'm going to exploit this. It's going to be fine. It's going to take me like two days and we'll have complete control of it. Yeah. So I spent basically four days spinning my wheels, completely failing and floundering, retrying these things that I thought were going to work over and over again. They didn't. And so then when I, again, the gentleman I mentioned before, Kev Dunn said, well, did you follow your process? And I was like, no. He's like, we'll go back to the beginning. So I went back to the beginning and I approached it with like no assumptions, just did my network scanning, did my application enumeration and just started kind of thinking through what was there. And then I started pulling different tools that I haven't used in a long time and different approaches and it worked out. But I think that's how you have to approach everything, right? You, I came in here and the culture at Open Door is different than Datadog. The culture here at Open Door is different than NCC Group. And if I came in and said, well, I'm going to make it the culture that I want, I think I would crush a lot of the things that make Open Door and specifically the team I joined really amazing. Yeah, I think that's a great point because I think a lot of times you have to work within the context and sometimes people try to mold an organization around what they like. And that's not always uh, the easiest thing to shift multiple people. Well, let me ask you a final question because I think I've been asking a lot of security people this and I'm, you know, I'd love to hear your view and, you know, I know it's a mentally taxing job. You guys are under constant stress. You can't prevent everything from happening. You got to do what you can. This is a personal question to you, but how do you handle the mental side of it? Like, what do you do to kind of make sure you're centered and from a mental health standpoint, you feel grounded, obviously being in a you know, pretty pretty high stressful job? Yeah, so there's, there's a couple of things. One is um, you schedule everything, right? So on my calendar right now, I've got in the morning, I have a block with, that I spend with my kids before they go to school. I have my you know family dinner and quiet time with my family blocked out. So you schedule everything because if you don't, you'll work long hours into you know infinity trying to solve every problem because there are an infinite number of problems. And then I think for me personally, it's different for everyone, but for me, when I'm near a screen, like a laptop or a phone, I have a propensity to gravitate back towards work because there's I like solving problems and there's always you know problems to solve. So I try to make sure that I have hobbies and interests that I'm doing on a regular basis that I'm making time for in my life that have nothing to do with um, computers or security or work. (laughs) So I have three children. I spend a lot of time with them. My oldest one's 18. So when she was doing volleyball, volleyball games were a big thing. Now, you know, it's just kind of hanging out. The younger ones, obviously, they want to go. We get out, hike, uh, go to parks. Took the, the one of the children hunting the other day. You know, we went out camping. Right. And then for me personally, I'm a huge nerd. So I uh, play some competitive tabletop miniature games that I am pretty into the hobby. And so that involves painting. So I like paint miniatures. I play. I'm part of a team. I write articles, like just try to dig deep into something that has nothing to do with security. Yeah, that's awesome. I I like the fact that yeah, that outside interest is kind of keeps you grounded and, you know, lets you step away and realize that uh, the job will be there when you get back. So I think that's kind of cool. My wife always says that um, I will not relax if something doesn't make me relax, right? So when my wife is planning things, she's like, oh, we're going to take a ferry to San Juan Island. And when you're on the ferry to San Juan Island, the whole ride out there, there's like no reception. And most of San Juan Island, there's no reception. So I have no choice but to like not worry about work. There you go. That's a great ending point because I think a lot of us would probably benefit from being in that position more. I was going to thank you for being on and, and sharing. I think it's been an awesome discussion. And if someone does want to ping you to follow up on anything you talked about on the podcast, is LinkedIn a, a good avenue to get in touch with you? Yeah, I think that's probably the easiest. I'm on you know, all the normal social media. It's not hard to find me, but I think LinkedIn is the easiest one that I'll probably definitely see because I check it pretty regularly. Awesome. We'll include some of those in the show notes for you. And uh, that'll be it for this episode. And we'll be back again with a different guest, different topic. 
And until then, I ask for two things. One, uh, keep sharing the podcast. It's been doing great. You know, the granite traffic's been awesome and we're seeing uh, the subscriptions go up. So I appreciate everyone for doing that. And also, if there's a topic you want me to cover, just hit me up on LinkedIn, let me know, and I'll try to find a guest to cover that topic. And until next time, thanks. Thanks. 